So today we are going to talk about logistic regression, which is also a classification technique. And this is how our content is going to be panned out. So first we will look at you know, what is the need to move beyond linear regression. So is it possible to solve classification problems using linear regression? We'll look at maximum likelihood principle, which is one of the essential ingredients of uh, logistic regression. Logistic regression is a binary classification uh, technique. So how to extend that to multi-class? And finally, we'll uh, discuss about some of the advantage and disadvantages of logistic regression. Okay, so let's get started. You know, let's say that you have a task where you want to classify a tumor as benign or malignant. Okay, now if you remember, linear regression expects the response that variable to be numeric. So my first step can be I just encode. I say that benign is 0 and malignant is 1. After that, whatever you do in linear regression, you calculate the beta 0 and beta 1, right? And then when a new uh, characteristics of a tumor comes, you predict y hat and you see whether it is beyond the midpoint. Is it more than 0 0.5? And if it is so, then we'll say it is malignant, else we'll call it as benign. So we can call this as a decoding stage. Okay. So some of the characteristics are that you can think that this is an estimate of probability of y equal to 1 given the various characteristics of x. However, you do understand that it is not probability scale. So there is a possibility that the regression value will be less than 0. Also, there is a possibility that the uh, value will be greater than 1. Okay. So, so far so good. At least we saw a rough scheme by which we can use a linear regression for classification. Let's extend to problem where it is more than two classes. So let's say you are trying to predict the condition of a patient in an emergency medical room. And the conditions can be like this. It can be stroke, drug overdose or epileptic seizure. And as you are trying to fit a linear regression uh, problem, first thing that you are going to do is you will make it numbers, right? So maybe you will assign 1 to stroke or 2 to drug overdose and 3 to epileptic season. And you will fit the linear regression problem. Do you see any issues? Well, there are at least two very, very important concerns. What are they? First is that there is a sense of order. So you are assuming that first comes stroke, then drug overdose, then epileptic. Caesar. That is number one. Number two, you are also assuming that the distance or difference between stroke and drug overdose and the difference between drug overdose and epileptic seizure is equal. Okay. So, for this reason, you cannot really fit linear regression for uh, problems which has more than two classes. Okay. Now, let us see that. All right. So, but is it true that linear regression can be fit to any binary classification problem. So let's look at an example. So here if you see that you have the tumor size over there and you have the benign tumor and malignant tumor over here. Okay. So you know if you feed a linear regression uh, line then you will see that of course uh, you know if, if there is a particular value of uh, tumor size you can follow this line and say that okay this is a benign tumor okay so which follows this assumption of when it goes beyond 0 0.5 so all are classified correctly okay now let's take a case like this and you know a linear regression will be formed by trying to minimize the square distances so if you get a line like this what you'll see is that for any tumor size uh, the response variable starts from uh, or starts from more than 0 0.5 Okay. So everything you will say as malignant. Okay. So essentially, probably I need a car which is not completely linear. Okay. Maybe you know it starts somewhere here and then it goes up like this, something of that sort, right? Maybe we need a graph like this, which is S shaped. Okay. So such a car is called as a logistic car, from which the name logistic regression derives. The equation of such a curve is 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x. So you have x over here and you have 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x plotted in your y-axis. Okay. So with minor manipulation, this can be seen to be e to the power x by 1 plus e to the power x. Right. So if you multiply numerator and denominator by e to the power x. 
and let's look at how this function will look like if you know if uh, you put the value of x so if i put a value of x which is less than or which is negative then you will get a very small value if it is minus 2 you will get a value of 0 0.119 you know if it is 0 you will get a value of 0 0.5 and then as you get positive values you will you will have it close going close to 1 okay so this 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 uh, function will always have a value between 0 to 1 okay and this can be used for our problem that we saw earlier now we can have a s shaped curve generated from the logistic regression and now if you see here if you give a tumor size and you get the corresponding value you'll see that it is more than 0 0.5 okay so now the question is that how do we so what do we fit in logistic regression what do we fit in regression now okay so can we do like this that we want to definitely model probability of y equal to 1 given the values of x which will denote as probability of x, x from now so can we find px equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x and then determine the value of beta 0 and beta 1 is there an issue the issue is same that it is not probability scale it can still go beyond 0 and 1 okay so instead of that can we use the logistic function somehow right so what we do is instead of making px equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x we make px equal to e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x by 1 plus e to the power beta 0 plus beta 1 x so if you take a log of this and do some calculation you will see that actually beta 0 and beta 1 x is logarithmic of px by 1 minus px so as if you are as if this is your response variable on which you are doing the regression right so this is your normal regression uh, right hand side and this is what you are now trying to determine okay so in probability terms actually this is called as odd okay odd ratio all right and from log odds it will be called as log logistic so basically you are trying to fit regression on log odds so that can also be thought as a reason why it is called as a logistic regression okay now let's look at what is the mechanism to find the values of beta 0 and beta 1 and if you remember from your you know machine learning problems that uh, you have some target given you have the data you try to see how closely your data fits uh, you, know, you know your data fits your response variable okay so you measure it by loss and there are certain parameters which you try to tune so that loss is minimized so that way you get the values of the parameters so here what are the parameters the parameters are of course beta 0 and beta 1 so essentially this is a quantity that you want to maximize for different values of beta 0 and beta 1 and whatever value of beta 0 and beta 1 gives you maximum value you choose as choose that as parameters of your logistic function okay so let us understand the significance of this value with an example so let's say here uh, there are two variables one is your independent variable how much time a student is spending on reading a particular size uh, a particular subject and then pass just tells that whether he you know he fails or passes okay so you can of course understand as the hours go up you know the chances of passing is more so that's how the data is also and what we are trying to do is when the value is 0 okay so we are trying to maximize 1 minus px okay basically because px is the probability of 1 okay so 1 minus px will have a higher value and when the probability is 1 okay so you are trying to maximize the probability of x so that's what have been done you know that y i equal to 1 when probability uh, y i equal to 1 you are calculating px i and when y i dashed is 0 you are taking 1 minus p x i okay so what here we have done is we have taken beta equal to beta 0 equal to minus 1 and beta is 0.5 and here we have taken beta as minus 2.5 and you know uh, beta 2 as 2 and what uh, we have seen is that this value comes to if we multiply this and take a log because if you don't take a log it is a very very long decimal number okay so uh, you know if we, if we multiply all these all these values where it is 0 and uh, and then where it is 1 we take this value then we get minus 3.394 for the first case and minus 4.657 uh, 
for the second case okay so naturally you know that you know this is a better fit okay so essentially what you need to do is you need to try for different values of you know beta 0 and beta 1 and that's how you know you will you will get the optimal value okay so getting the optimal value is beyond the scope of this discussion i just wanted to give you an idea that you know how this beta 0 and beta 1 plays a role in this maximum likelihood okay so maximum likelihood is the probability of uh, is the is a product of the probabilities and you are taking the you are directly multiplying the product when it, the value is 1 because that's how, what is pxi and when the value is when the value is 0 actually you are trying to maximize 1 minus px okay so that's the fundamental or basic idea all right so some other things is that let's say now we want to make a prediction when the number of hours is 0 0.4 so how do you do the prediction so this is the you know this is the equation where we'll fit it you know we'll put beta 0 equal to 1 and uh, beta 0 is minus 1 and beta 1 to be 0 0.5 and if we put that here in this equation we get probability of pass is 0 0.31 and probability of fail is 0 0.69 so we'll say that you know starting for 0 0.4 hours uh, the student will fail okay so that's how this classification works how to uh, extend this to you know multi regression where you have more than one variable so simply you know you can you can extend this you can make this as beta 0 plus beta 1 uh, up to beta p into x to the power p if you have p predictors okay so that's how it can be extended to multiple logistic regression all right. Now let's look at how uh, this can be extended from a one class to many class classification. So let's say you have a scenario like this where there are three classes. You know, you have dogs and you have goats and you have cats. So first of all, what you do is you, you need to, you know that this works for binary classification. So you try to, you know, change the problem to binary classification problem. Okay. So let's say I will make dog and not dog okay so this will be one binary classification problem and that way we can construct more than one classification problem or actually three binary classification problems okay which are like this all right so we have you know goat and not goat dog and not dog and cat and not cat and now the, these are well separable and we can solve using logistic regression so this is good now if an unknown instance comes, right, so how will we predict the level? So let's say an unknown instance comes. So what we'll do is we'll find the probability of goat from this uh, equation given animal attributes. We'll find the probability of dog given the animal attribute. And here we'll find the probability of cat given animal attribute. So whichever probability will be maximum, we will assign this unknown observation to that particular class. Okay, so this is how it is extended to multi-classification problems. Now some of the advantage and disadvantages. So it works well for separable cases, linear separable cases. You know, it is easy to train and also it is easy to interpret. So however, some of the disadvantages are if it is not linearly separable, it doesn't work well. And of course, you can understand that it doesn't work for regression. However, you know that some classification models like support vector machine, like decision tree, they can also extend to regression, which is not the case with logistic regression. Thank you so much for watching. Please put your questions in comment section and I will try my best to go through each one of them and answer it. Thank you so much for watching.